and welcome to the channel! I'm Trainer Weaves, and this is another news video! So, Cresselia is our new tier 5 raid boss. It's a psychic type, which means use whatever teams you probably already have built up for Mewtwo or any of the many other psychic bosses that we've had so far. If this will be your first battle against a psychic type, what you want is... I was about to say Mewtwo, but you can only get Mewtwo if you've already battled a Psychic type. But either way, Mewtwo with Shadow Ball will be the top counter for Cresselia. After that we have Tyranitar with Dark Moves, Houndoom with Dark Moves, or Sizer and Pinsir with Bug Moves. If you got a good Gengar, then that'll do a lot of damage, but it is weak to Psychic, so it'll be more of a glass cannon. If you are using Gengar, stick it right up front at the top of your team so it can get its damage done and dusted, and then get knocked out and make room for others. Weavile will be another good option if you've already evolved a Sneasel with your Sinnoh Stone, but it will be weak if the Cresselia you're fighting has Moonblast, so you want to watch out for that. In another bit of news that's only relevant to a very small portion of the user base, Pokestop submissions have been temporarily disabled due to an issue with the latest update. Presumably they'll be back soon. More raid news, the Evolutions will be available in raids until 26th November. I believe these are in tier 3s, and you can get... This is where I'm like, wait, what are the evolutions again? Espeon, Umbreon, Flareon, Jolteon, and Vaporeon, and it has been so long since I thought about Eevee that I almost forgot them. I know what Pokemon are. Raichu is also available in raids, as is Alolan Raichu, and... I don't know about shiny Raichu actually, but there is a shiny version available for Alolan Raichu, so that is definitely one to get hunting. Especially if, like me, you're in the bit of the Meltan quest where you have to do 10 raids. Nice bit of news for those of you who love collecting. Pokemon Storage Maximum is now 2,000 Pokemon, which is an increase of 500 over the previous max. You can get that for the low, low price of 2,000 coins, which is about 15 pounds, I think? Obviously, that's not including any coins you get from sitting in gyms. And the biggest, most exciting news of the week for anyone, especially people who started playing or resumed playing midway through this year, there is a Pokemon Go Community Weekend happening, and that will run from this Friday, 1pm PST, which is 9 o'clock UK time, to Sunday, technically, 11pm Sunday PST, which is 7am Monday morning for us. On this community weekend, every community day Pokemon that has been released this year will be boosted. And during the community day hours, the normal community day hours, so for me that's 10am to 1pm, on Saturday if you evolve those Pokemon you get the exclusive moves that you might have missed if you weren't around for the previous community days. So if you're shiny hunting, amazing! They haven't specifically said that the shiny forms will be boosted to the same rate that they normally are at community days, but they have said that every community day Pokemon spawn will be boosted. So even if they don't boost the shiny form rate, there will be so many more chances to try and get those shinies. And if you didn't know, here's the list of Pokemon that will be boosted. Bulbasaur, Charmander, Squirtle, Pikachu, Eevee, Dratini, Chikorita, Cyndaquil, Mareep, Lavita, and Beldum. If you want to make the most of this weekend to get the powerful Pokemon, the ones you should be targeting are Lavatar, Beldum, Bulbasaur, and Charmander. Because those evolved forms will give you one of the highest damage outputs of each of their types. So you want to catch or keep the highest ones of those that you can, evolve them during the Community Day window, and with Tyranitar you get Smackdown, with Metagross you get Meteor Mash, Venusaur you get Frenzy Plant, and Charizard will get Blast Burn. The others are there, they're nice to have if you like legacy moves, but they're not particularly powerful compared to other similar Pokemon. Personally, I'm probably just going to be hunting shiny Pikachu, because that was the first community day, and me and Nick looked at it. It was 10am. I am not a morning person. So we kind of looked at it, went, uh, and rolled over and went back to sleep. And then when there was only about an hour left, we found out that shiny Pikachu was out and had to scramble and we got one shiny Pikachu each but that means I don't have a shiny Raichu 
And how will I ever have a complete Pokedex without shiny Raichu? They also haven't talked about Sunglasses Squirtle. Uh, that was a Community Day exclusive, so I have no idea if it's going to be in research tasks again. But just in case it is, maybe on the day that you have Community Day hours, hold off on doing the research until the hours happen. What actually happened during Squirtle Community Day was that every research task on the Pokestops gave you a Squirtle with sunglasses, and certain Pokestops would give you a shiny Squirtle with sunglasses. Maybe they'll do that again? I guess we'll find out soon. And finally, there's been a new app update with a whole bunch of new features. Mostly quality of life stuff, but that's okay because one of them is a big one for me, who calls herself Weaves, and is therefore at the bottom end of the alphabet. You can now search for friends in the friends list. And you can also reverse sort both in the friends list and in your Pokemon storage. So that means all of us with names that start with like W or Z will no longer be forgotten, hopefully. And over in the Pokemon storage itself, it's now a lot easier to find your oldest Pokemon if you're thinking of doing trades. Or you can reverse sort by HP and find the ones that are a little bit sickly, need some healing up. Also, if you're looking for your older Pokemon for trades, if you go into the Pokemon screen itself, any Pokemon caught before the current year, so Pokemon caught in 2017 or 2016, they now have an indicator on the screen showing what date they were caught. So it's much easier to find those that might have a higher chance of being lucky. There's also a notification telling you how much walking distance you've racked up using Adventure Sync, which is nice. And it's not visible yet, but according to the Silk Road's analysis of the app software, there will be a Winter 2018 event coming. So hopefully we'll find out more about that soon. Anyway, that's all I have for this week. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.